Sisters and brothers, let us go now to the Lord, to offer ourselves and our gifts to God, to enter into God's holy presence here online this morning with awe and thanksgiving. For praise God, we are welcome here. Come, now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. Please join me in our call to worship. God calls us to worship and service. We come to receive God's good gifts. What do you need from God today? We need the wisdom that can only come from God. Why do you seek wisdom? So that we will have the ability to discern what is good and right. Your desire is pleasing to God, who grants your deepest longings. We will use our gift of wisdom to worship God and serve all humanity. You didn't do this. Oh, okay. Oh God, who created and is ever creating, grant us your creatures um, the grace to grow into the likeness of your son, Jesus, so that we may indeed by your image and your likeness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading today is taken from 2 Kings verses, chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Nahum, <clears throat> commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, uh, mighty warrior suffered from leprosy. Now the Armenians on <coughs> one <coughs> of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel and she served Nahum's wife. She said to her master, her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Nahum went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. 
and <clears throat> and the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shackles of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when the, this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Nahum's Nahum, <clears throat> that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, to he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the uh, man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Nahum came with his horses and chariot and <clears throat> halted at the entrance of, the, of Elijah's house. Elisha uh, sent a message to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Nahum became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and would wave his hand over the spot <clears throat> and cure the leprosy. Wow, uh, not a banner. A not abandoned and far, far, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the water of the of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage, but his servant approached and said to him, Father. If the prophet had commanded you to do something different, difficult, would you not have done it? <clears throat> How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the, in the Jordan according to the word of the man of, of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy and he was clean. For our special music this morning, I called up a friend. <laughs> um, this is Tom Golly. He's a dear friend of mine. He's a Christian musician down in Nashville. I hope you'll check out his music and he's given us permission today to use this um, this song of his which he's done so beautifully I hope you enjoy it and God bless you in the brokenness when hope seems far away through all the mess try to keep control for one more day stumbling through the dark holding on so tight to what I want for my own life but I'm just so tired of the way things have been I've been knocked down, I've been counted out, I've been frozen in fear, heart filled with doubt. I've made my mistakes, and all I know is I'm not giving up, I'm letting go. Can have 
have it all. The war was never mine. Thing you cleared a way to make it right. You give me purpose and you take me as I am. Do what you want with my life. Oh, cause I'm just so tired of the way things have been. I've been knocked down, I've been counted out. I've been frozen in fear, heart filled with doubt. I made my mistakes, and all I know is I'm not giving up. I'm letting go. The second reading is taken from Ephesians 4, chapter 1, <clears throat> chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. <clears throat> and therefore, <clears throat> the prisoner in the Lord beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling of which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is only, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given a given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when, the, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descends is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were were um, that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints of the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturing to the measure of the fullness of the full stature of Christ, we must no longer be children 
tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of direct of doctrine by people's trickery by their craftness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth and love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament which in which it is equipped as each part of is working properly promotes the body growth and building itself up in love may the lord add a blessing to the reading of his word Our preacher this morning is Larry Sprinkle, lay servant and lay leader of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Okay, good morning, congregation. Let's settle in and be warmed by the Lord's message. Today, I will continue the series on the spiritual gifts. To refresh our memory, Kathy spoke on apostleship, faith, leadership, and prophecy. Last week, Pastor David presented encouragement, evangelism, exhortation, and teaching. Today, I will talk about assistance, discernment, healing, and wisdom. First, let's look at an example of these, of three of these gifts in the Old Testament reading that Joanne had just read out 2 Kings 5. We have in this story of Naaman the effect of the gifts of assistance, wisdom, and healing. Pastor David suggested the reading, and I agreed that this story well fits today's gifts. This demonstrates how God utilizes his gifts in the Old Testament. The story has two assistants, the young Israeli maiden and Elijah's messenger. The wisdom giver, is one of Naaman's servants. Listen carefully as I reread it as a, in a Reader's Digest condensed version. Naaman is commander of a King Aram's army with a man of valor and had won great battles with the help of the Lord. But he had one major flaw. He had rep leprosy. A young Israeli maiden who had been taken as a captive suggested he should visit the prophet in Jerusalem to cure his leprosy. Naaman got permission from his king to travel to Jerusalem. As he approached the entrance of the prophet Elijah's home, Naaman was met by a messenger tell, telling him to go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. Naturally, Naaman, feeling as a man of stature, was enraged because he was not personally greeted by the prophet. He turned away and left. But one of his servants, using wisdom, said, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said was to wash and be clean. Naaman realized what that meant. And then he went to the Jordan River, dunked himself seven times, was cleansed, and had the flesh of the young boy. <clears throat> the end result was Naaman glorifying and edifying God. That is the response we should be doing as we use our own spiritual gifts. The New Testament reading is one of my favorite chapters. I like how God inspired Paul to write this chapter. I love the way Paul connects 1 Corinthians 12 with Ephesians 4. 
Paul represents uh, in in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul explains how the body of the church as a metaphor of the human body. It is easy to understand how all the parts of the body operates as one unit. Paul presents the one body, the one spirit, the diversities of gifts from the same spirit, a difference of administrations, but one Lord, diversities of operations, but the same God, word of wisdom, the same spirit, word of knowledge, the same spirit, faith, the same spirit, Gifts of healing, the same spirit. In Ephesians, Paul further defines what must happen before the gifts are given to us. He writes, therefore, the prisoner of, of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the calling wherein you are called, with patience, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now, these next three verses about always sends shivers up my spine. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace. What was that? Hold on a minute. Let's read that again. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So it is by the grace of God that the gifts are bestowed on us. He continues in verses four, five, and six. There is one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. The 10 commandments says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. And I will show mercy upon thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Let me include four sentences from the Nicene Creed here. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the one and only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of, being, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. No other small God, small G God compares. No other small G does, a God does as much. No other small g God loves us as much. And then in verse 11 of Ephesians 4, the gifts are given. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints of the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We must first believe and have faith in Jesus and develop a relationship with God, and then the gifts are given to us. As we round second base, heading into today's spirits, which are one, discernment, is a gift of deep intuition and insight, 
Discerning people can separate truth from fiction and know at a visceral level when people are being honest. Deeply sensitive and tuned in, those with the gift of discernment are open to feelings, new ideas and intuition as valid and credible information. Discernment is not irrational, but transrational beyond empirical knowledge, meaning going beyond or su surpassing human reason. Personally, I have been given insight into the word of God. Pastor, I want to testify to you. I have seen in the last eight years, great discernment in the Bible studiers who attend the classes. Second, the gift of healing is not about transferring spiritual power to eliminate suffering and disease, but the ability to channel God's grace and healing love to those who suffer physical, emotional, and spiritual pain. Healers are moved to be present with those who suffer. Healers pray to those who suffer, visit those who are ill, and are usually moved to extend a hand of comfort and touch to those who are afflicted. Healers may give their time and energy to offering aid and comfort to others. Hope Mann and Jan Carolyn and their committee do an excellent job with the member care. Three, the gift of wisdom, wisdom allows people to understand deeper meaning and apply knowledge, beliefs, and experience to everyday situations. Wise, gifted individuals make connections and help other help each other make them as well to understand the implications of our beliefs and actions. Those gifted with wisdom often understands what causes of disagreements, conflict, and barriers to growth and development. People with wisdom help others understand and clarify options to make good decisions. Alas, we would all like to be like Solomon. He was very humbled in asking God for the gift. May we all learn that lesson. And as we utilize our own gifts and grow in them, we will develop wisdom also. Number four, helping or assistance is a gift of support and behind the scenes effort that make groups, families, and congregations more effective. Not everyone is gifted to lead, but many are gifted to follow and handle the tasks that are so essential, but less glamorous. Helpers love to serve others, support others, and assist others in the back in the in, in the important work of ministry and mission. Tireless in their willingness to serve, helpers are less interested in receiving thanks and recognition than in doing good, valuable work. We have noticed in this past year or two years that the committees of the church are full of this gift. We have seen lots of assistance coming from people that work behind the scenes. Pastor David, I want to, I think we have to acknowledge this congregation is full of spiritual gifts. And as those gifts are utilized, I believe St. Paul's will become more of a beacon to attract more spiritual gift users. As we grow into using our gifts, as in verses 12b, 13, 14, in today's lesson, the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure in the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, of, of teaching. 
<coughs> instead of speaking the truth in love, in, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, and that is Christ. The whole body is joined together, held together by those that grows <clears throat> and held together by love that grows and grows and grows. Then we have one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And the congregation says, Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Larry, so much for offering us the word here this morning. We praise God for the word that's been given to you and thank God in our hearts for all that we have received today. As we move into our prayers together, we remember, God, that you have given us great gift in one another. We are so blessed to have such a variety of gifts in this world and in each other and in our church. And so we ask you, Lord, that as we come before you this day, that you would remind us of these gifts, that we are not without resources, and that perhaps one of the greatest resources that we have is the ability to call on our Heavenly Father, who loves us and cares for us, and who watches over us, even as we pray today. For those who need healing, for those who need guidance, those who need protection, and those whom we celebrate. Let us pray to the Lord together, sisters and brothers. Gracious and everlasting God, as we come before your throne this day, wherever we may find ourselves, we give you thanks, Lord, for the warm places in which we sit. We give you thanks, Lord, for comfortable spaces that surround us. And we give you thanks for the great community of believers and saints who surround us even in this moment as we offer these prayers. Oh God, we pray today for those on our prayer list. And we offer thanks today, Lord, for those uh, and already who are going to receive the healing and guidance and protection and those whom we celebrate because we know, Lord, that it is in your heart to see these things done. In particular, oh God, we lift up prayers today for those who need healing. And I want to invite my sisters and brothers to unmute themselves as we go about this community prayer together. God, we pray for Betty White today, Lord, that you would heal her, Lord, of that which afflicts her and you would help her, Lord, get rid of the the virus that is bothering her this day we pray for danny mccarthy her brother for west Brigg, especially lord for the vision in his eyes for gary subtle colleen mcguire pastor Ron lee from Mac united methodist church robert hayhurst karen letty helen kegaris jonathan gadzini michelle sanchez Janet Griebert, Tommy Buckelman, Maureen Seiler, Noah Shear, Joan Senzel, and Ilsa Liebold. God, we pray for those suffering from COVID-19 or its aftermath, and for an end to this pandemic, that your people may gather together in safety and in joy. God, we pray for comfort, consolation, <coughs> friends of James Lyman, Anthony G. Domeni, Bob, Tim Lynch, Bobby Heilick, James Gazzini, Kevin Ballas, and all of those in mourning to this day. I pray for everybody to be safe in this weather, and please be safe, and if you're driving your car, be safe as well, and I'll say goodbye right now. Have a good week, everyone. Take care, Betty. Baby. Loving God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. God, we pray today for those who need guidance, for our world, national, state, and local leaders, for Bishop Pickerton, D.S. Julia Yim, and the leaders of our beloved church, that all of these might have godly wisdom as they go about their work in this world to transform it, to lead it into righteousness and justice and peace. And we pray today for a world set free from the bonds of prejudice and hatred, 
that you would set us free from these bonds of sin. Let us lift up our prayers for those who need guidance today. Be with President Biden. Be with Biden as he makes decisions about the Supreme Court justice. I pray for our senators and congressmen. For those who work with the mentally ill. For all of our military personnel and first responders and our frontline workers and those we lift up before you now for protection. For our children, stay well to and fro from school. For everyone coming and going in the snow today. For those on the border. Loving God. Our prayers. Our prayers. God, we pray today for those whom we celebrate in gratitude for our families and friends and co-laborers for the kingdom of God. Lord, you have given us many gifts, and it is just a joy to be able to be together with one another. Lord, we lift up those whom we celebrate. Those having birthdays this week, this month. For all the snow plowers, the shovelers, and those watching over our streets today. Amen. Amen. Loving God. Our prayer. Lord, it is with the assurance of faith that we come before you this day in praise and thanksgiving for all that you've given to us. God, we know that whether we speak our prayers aloud or offer them to you in the whispers of the heart, that you hear our prayers, Lord, and that your response is always born of your steadfast love for all your children. And you always come when your children call. And so, Lord, it is with this assurance of faith that we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father. Father, our heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we trespass against us. And lead us into temptation. And what delivers evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, glory forever and forever. Amen. Now is the time when we would give our offering. And I know what you're thinking. Pastor, I'm not going to the mailbox this morning. It's icy out there, and I'm not going to mail a check to the church right now. But that's good news, because I hear that it's going to be 60 degrees on Thursday. So there's plenty of time to get out there and get to the mailbox and get your check to church so that we can offer of ourselves and our gifts. We can offer online as well, but most importantly, in this moment, give our hearts over to God. Let us offer of ourselves, our gifts, all that we've been given, for we are truly blessed. Even when times are difficult, God is with us, and that is a blessing in of itself. God, we offer to you these gifts today. And especially, Lord, we offer you the gifts that we'll now reflect upon. Lord, remembering that you've shared with us so many things, I'd like to invite my sisters and brothers now to go ahead and fill out our online form, which I've just put into the chat if you need to get to it right now, so that you can go ahead and discern what these spiritual gifts are. As Larry talked about discernment today, Perhaps you were discerning a spiritual gift that you possess. So I invite you now in these next few moments to think about the gifts that you've been given, how you might use them, how you have used them, and how we as a church might gather together around the gifts that we've been given to share God's love with the world. I pray you'll reflect as we listen to these words. God of change and glory, God of time and space, when we fear the future, give to us your grace. In the midst of changing ways, give us still the grace to praise. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our differences, blessing from diversity we praise. One giver, one Lord, 
One Spirit, one Word, known in many ways, hallowing our days. For the giver, for the gifts, praise, praise, praise. God of many colors, God of many signs, you have made us different, blessing many kinds. As the old ways disappear, let your love cast out our fear. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our differences, blessing from diversity we praise. One giver, one Lord, one spirit, one word, known in many ways, hallowing our days. For the giver, for the gifts, praise, praise, praise. Freshness of the morning, newness of each night you are still creating endless love and light this we see as shadows part many gifts from one great heart many gifts one spirit one love known in many ways in our differences blessing from diversity we praise one giver one lord one spirit one word known in many ways hallowing our days for the giver for the gifts praise 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 amen let us pray abba we give these gifts to you full lord to the point of overflowing and all that you have poured into our lives each and every day god you give us so many good gifts we are so blessed and so we praise you and honor you this day as we ask that you would bless these gifts that we've shared with you, that you first shared with us. Use us constantly in your service, O oh God. Make these gifts that we share instruments of thy peace and reminders of your coming kingdom. Help us, Lord, to work for justice and equity in this world, to share with one another your love and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us sing to the Lord together.
Amen, O God, we give you thanks this day for all that you've shared with us. Sisters and brothers, may we rise wherever we are and go in peace and know that God is with us wherever we may find ourselves this morning. God's presence fill your homes, fill our streets, and watch over our land. And fill us all to overflowing with the Holy Spirit who brings the good gifts. Go in peace and may the peace of Christ be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.